considering Toronto's finished as at least a top four seed in their conference for the last seven NBA seasons before 2021, the fact that they're 2-8 and eight and 14th in their conference so far has shocked the NBA universe. So you're about to see a breakdown of the problem with the Raptors. Merely a year and a half ago, the Raptors hoisted the Larry O'Brien trophy, and they were led by a shot creator who had an all-time great playoff run in Kawhi Leonard. The Raptors became a staple on my channel, as some of my most popular videos were about them. I predicted they were built for the finals a few months before they actually beat the Bucks to get there. Before the trade deadline in that season, I got lucky in my prediction of the Marc Gasol trade before he was moved to the Raps. Even after Kawhi moved on in the summer after securing a championship, I continued to cover the Raptors' success in videos, because this was a team that had character, chemistry, swag, and a clear identity. A lot of fans were interested in them. But all those traits I just mentioned, the 2021 version of the Raps heavily are lacking. The first time All-Star from last season Pascal Siakam is starting to turn his game around as he just dropped a triple-double. I know he's missed two game winners in a row, one of which was a completely makeable shot which there's no excuse for, but some of the blame has to be put on the man drawing up these plays and choosing to put Pascal in an ISO situation instead of either going to a better pure shot creator like Lowry or Van Vliet in that situation, or he could have even drawn up a creative offense ball play. Look, I know he's the reigning coach of the year and the man who became an NBA champion in his first year in charge by utilizing a box and one strategy to slow down Curry. But Nurse seems to have developed a big time ego in his third coaching campaign. He doesn't want his opinion challenged by anyone. He's made some head scratching decisions that haven't set the Raptors up well for success. And it's on the players to close out games, I know that, which the Raptors haven't done. Six of their eight losses have been in which they've had double digit leads and coughed them up. It's been excruciating to watch. But with Nick's questionable managing of minutes and strange reliance on Pascal Siakam in the dying seconds, instead of letting Van Vliet take the big shot, or even Lowry, Nurse has lost the ear of his locker room, and there have been a lot of other reasons that have led to that. He's made many more mistakes. I'll break down both that later on, and other big issues with this Raptor team that you have to stick around for. Right quick though, I make breakdowns like this about teams and players, and tomorrow, I'm posting a top 5 ranking, but whatever it is, I post NBA videos every day, so hit that like button to support this daily content, a thumbs up really helps this video's growth, and if you haven't already subscribed to stay tuned, I promise you this is the place to be if you're an NBA fan. To be fair to the Raptors, they've been given a less than ideal circumstance this season, as they've been denied access to their home city, forced to play their home games in a different arena and a different country entirely, and before Tampa denied fans from coming to games recently, the Raptors' home games were anything but an advantage. Late in the third quarter of the Raptors' humiliating loss to the Boston Celtics, Grant Williams stepped to the free throw line, and the near 4,000 fans in the arena started chanting, We want Taco. 70 to 80% of the crowd were Celtic fans, and that should have been expected given Toronto's playing in a different country, as I said. But now that fans won't be allowed for Tampa sports teams, the Raps should be able to establish some type of home court advantage. The $85 million man, Fred Van Vliet, who's actually backing up that contract with his production so far, spoke on Toronto's less than ideal situation, saying, quote, There's a long list of excuses, to be honest with you. You can't lock into that way of thinking. Like I said, we're not moving. We're going to be here in Tampa. It's not our home. Fans are going to cheer for that other team. And that's the reality of the situation. So you can sit around and cry about it or figure out a way to work through it, end quote. And while as a Raptors fan, I feel for the entire team, even Nurse, it's clear where Fred's negativity stems from, and not to seem like I'm picking out a scapegoat, Toronto's start isn't fully on Nick Nurse, but I think he needs to be more of a positive influence and lead his guys through this adversity, because this is what this man is saying to reporters after losses. Quote, I mean, I literally haven't left the hotels on our road trips yet. It's like you go to a city and you stay in the hotel. It's not like we're going out and doing a heck of a lot of bonding. End quote. If the coach isn't being strategic enough, that's one thing, but when your coach is openly being negative about the team's situation, that can kill a team's chemistry and confidence in any sport you play. The fact that Toronto's been up so much in all of these games 
proves to me that they have the talent to compete in any game, but if you can't close it out, merely competing doesn't mean anything. Nick Nurse putting the ball in Siakam's hands with the game on the line, instead of letting his all-star caliber guards create offense for either themselves or even Pascal in a pick and roll scenario, that was an utterly poor call. Just plain isos for Pascal with the game on the line and back-to-back -back games real creative. Then there's the confusing decision to keep a man out of the starting lineup who had six blocks and has put up at least 20 points in four of Toronto's 10 games. I'm talking about Chris Boucher, who's played only 22 minutes per game this season, hasn't cracked the starting lineup yet, however the 28-year-old center hasn't let his lack of playing time stop him from being third in the NBA in blocks, directly behind an all-NBA player in Rudy Gobert. Who knows why Nurse has let so many crucial minutes of the game pass by without having their breakout player this season on the floor. Chris Boucher's made just under 50% of his three-point shots while taking four three-point attempts per game, an extremely efficient mark. But for Nick Nurse, this year his mentality's been so negative that instead of giving Chris the much-deserved opportunity as a starter, he points the finger at role players in his post-game interviews, doesn't give Chris the opportunity, of course. After the Celtics' loss, Nick said, quote, I'm disappointed in Matt Thomas. I'm disappointed in Terrence Davis. They've made too many mistakes defensively, end quote. Then there's how Nick has treated Masai Ujiri's draft steal, at least in my opinion, he's a draft steal. I'm talking about Malachi Flynn. Like a player I talked about yesterday with the Celtics in Peyton Pritchard, Malachi played through to his senior season in college and Toronto's front office drafted him to bring the team the shock rating they lacked in the 2020 playoffs. And Malachi Flynn filled Toronto's shock rating hole right off the bat as he had a game in the preseason where he dropped 17 points and his numbers were very solid in that preseason. Toronto finished 2-1 with Malachi playing 17.3 minutes per game. But for some reason, so far in the regular season, Nurse has given him four DMPs to kick off the year, and he's really only been given an opportunity in garbage time. When he played his most minutes, he provided 12 points against the Kings, but when Nurse was asked about Flynn's debut, where Malachi had been sitting on the bench for two weeks prior to that game, Nick said, quote, he was okay. I think my bigger thing is, if you want to be honest about it, he didn't really do much out there. And if you want to be honest about it, Norm hasn't played very well this year, TD hasn't played very well this year, Matt hasn't played very well this year, end quote. I'm all for calling out players under the right circumstances, but when things are already going wrong for you and you crush your player's spirit with post-game interviews like this, it's a bad look. Nick's best assistant coach, Nate Bjorgren, who is his right-hand man, left to become Indiana's head coach, and Nate's Pacers are at the top of the Eastern Conference. And with all the mistakes Nick's making and all the success Nate's having, as a fan, you start to question who is the real backbone to the Raptors' championship operation. But in terms of on the court, firstly, there's the Raptors' loss of both their centers, Marcus Gasol and Serge Ibaka. That's cost them just as much, if not more, than losing Kawhi did. Any team that loses both of their best players at a particular position is going to be worse the next year, there's no question about that. But for the first time in a while, Masai and the Raps' front office struggled to improve in an offseason. Aaron Baines, that pickup hasn't worked out. He's bricked about every open shot in the paint and open three he's attempted. Alex Len is proving that whatever team has him playing heavy minutes in the rotation isn't going to be a winning team. Secondly, there's the core issue that every one of the Raptors problems boils down to, and that's the lack of shot creation. Right now, when Toronto's under pressure and needs a bucket, whether in crunch time to extend a lead, or just when a situation where they need to swing momentum, it's impossible for them to not only get good looks up, but to even trust that they're going to be there in the first place. Fred Van Vliet and Kyle Lowry are good shot creators, but they need that true number one option to turn to. And unfortunately, as good as Pascal's numbers have been recently, he can't put the team on his back and carry you like Kawhi can. And with the inconsistencies of Norm Powell, the little to no production you're getting from the center spot other than Boucher, who doesn't play that much for some reason, Toronto's desperately in need of that shock raider who can get you buckets at will. Having that top superstar, or even just top scorer, could make everything tick for a Raptor roster that's proved with the right man at the top of the offense, they can be champions. 
Masai Ujiri needs to do one of two things in my non-GM fan's perspective. A. Package Powell, Pascal, Flynn, and picks for a star player. Or B. Trade Lowry to a contender, see what you have with your young guys, and tank for a top draft pick. Leaving the team as it is will likely result in a 9th to 12th seed in the East. As of right now, the Raptors are a middle-of-the-pack, fringe, bottom-feeding team, as sad as that is to say as a Raptor fan. There's been a 10-game sample size, but going back to the second round of the 2020 playoffs, the Raptors have built up a reputation as a team that chokes under pressure. Having a top 5-10 to 10 player in the world, or even having a guy you know you can throw the ball to and manufacture offense, that's not only beneficial to the team you have, but the type of threat your opponent sees you as. If an NBA team doesn't have one or multiple weapons who can just go off at will and scare opposing coaches and players, they're probably going to lose. Right now, the Raptors just don't have that flashy, intimidating go-to guy like a team like the Celtics who I broke down yesterday. Those are just all my takes, though. I want to know yours in the comments section. You're the best for sticking around. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.